All right, Big Math, episode six of Life with MPA, the real scoop. Right. And uh, so I want to apologize to you guys because last last time on the last episode, episode four, we actually did a Q&A, which I completely left out. <laughs> so <laughs> apologies for that. So to make up for today, what we're going to do is an entire episode on Q&A. So Matt's got a, got a bunch of good questions that are coming from you guys. So they're real questions of people watching the show. So take it, take it away, Matt. Uh, what do you got, man? Yeah, so we're pulling these questions from the Instagram post I made. So just at random, uh, I'm just going to read off some questions for you guys and do my best to answer them. You know, if I don't, if I can't answer them extensively, then I'll just be honest with, uh, with you guys. All right, so uh, this guy, I cannot pronounce his screen name. It's S-I-W-E-L-F-F-E-G-E-J. I I don't even know. Shout out. Doesn't matter. (laughs) But I'll read your question. He says, I've read about guys in the 70s and 80s commonly running significant cycles without test. What is your opinion and experience on this? So, my experience with this is actually in my beginning upcoming competition days. Uh, It was from... Uh, my first show, so 20 years old to 25 years old. I never ran testosterone pre-contest. My thought process was back then, um, why run tests? Because you're going to then have a aromatization to estrogen. Then with the estrogen, you have to use another drug to combat the estrogen. And then you might have DHT side effects, acne, you might have to take acne medication. So I just thought it was like, why not just use the hardeners like Primabolin, um, master on trend balloon, et cetera. So that was my thought process back then. And I went test free and I did well, you know, I won shows, won overalls. Um, I had a very dry look. Now I did have no testosterone or the low test uh, symptoms, no sex drive. Right. I had, uh, uh, obviously when estrogens plummeted, which it was because I didn't use anything that aromatized at all. Um, you know, your libido sucks your joints hurt. So I had all those symptoms. However, my look was very dry. I didn't have to use a Remedex or Letrozole or anything harsh. Um, so it worked well for me at that time. However, I started incorporating testosterone in my pre-contest cycles uh, when I was 25. So 2010 and onward. Um, and of course I was bigger on stage. Uh, at some shows I was not as consistent. So I would be a little bit, I could be off more. That made sense where my estrogen might've been not dialed into where it needed to be. But it definitely added another dimension to my physique, a little bit more three-dimensional look. Um, I felt better, so I had more energy. My libido was higher. I had a sex drive during contest prep. And, and, you know, even whenever you have testosterone, it comes to a point whenever you get so lean and dieted down, you lose your sex drive even with testosterone. Maybe not all people, but when you're just dead tired, it's going to happen. So that was my experience with it. Um, Just recently... uh, I came uh, off of uh, TRT and went into uh, a nandrolone replacement therapy. I actually got prescribed nandrolone, so I wanted to see what DECA did on its own. I only used 300 milligrams a week, and it wasn't fun because um, whenever I was on nandrolone only and no testosterone, your estrogen actually tanks to nothing, pretty much. Um, My testosterone obviously was nothing. DHT was nothing. So I had no androgenic characteristics, which means that I was lethargic. Uh, I was kind of depressed, glum, not excited. Libido sucked. Muscle fullness and mass stayed just the same as it would have on testosterone replacement therapy. But on the nandrolone replacement therapy, it wasn't ideal. Now, maybe hypothetically, had I run nandrolone, not at just 300, but at like 900 or 1200, at that dose, I might have had enough aromatization with estrogen enough to actually make me feel better with my sex drive and joints and all that good stuff. So um, that's my personal experience with it. I think that everyone needs um, an estrogenic component and a DHT component to feel good and to also have the best results. Because what a lot of people don't know, Dave, is that you need a little bit of estrogen to actually burn body fat, okay? So not a lot, but you need to have a range of like 10 to 40 um, level and it increases hormone sensitive light lipase HSL okay which is a fat liberating hormone and if it goes too low and plummeted that decreases and you won't burn as much body fat mm-hmm. so whenever you have these um, 
gurus or experts, so sort of say, uh, that put you on, which I've heard, which is crazy and redundant, Arimidex plus Letro plus Aromacin, Proviron, last four weeks. You're killing estrogen so low that you actually are doing yourself a disservice to oxidize the last little remaining fat. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to do that, which is still ludicrous to do all that, the last five days when body fat should be diminished anyway, go for it. Um, I wouldn't recommend that many things. It's kind of overkill. Mm -hmm. But whenever I see these, you know, contest prep coaches doing that like four to six weeks out, crazy. Overdoing it. Overdoing yeah. it. So yeah. like I said, um, it's it's doable. Um, Deca needs to be high enough to actually convert to estrogen to make you feel good. But in the grand scheme of things, I think testosterone component is ideal. Good. So thank you. Thank you. All right, Big Mac. What else you got? All right. We have Mr. G Norris on Instagram. He asked, there's so many opinions on uh, how blasting and cruising should be done. Would be interesting to hear your insight on this topic. Thanks. Okay, so blasting and cruising. First, we got to define what that means, Dave. And that can mean a lot of things, right? Doesn't you know? sound good. <laughs> so blasting and cruising, okay. What that means to me, blasting, okay, super physiological anabolic doses. Um, whether it be just testosterone on its own high, 500, 1,000, 1,200, whatever, uh, or it could be a stack of multiple compounds to muscle building dosages, okay? Cruising, now cruising to me is a health phase, okay? Cruising to me would be to come down to 150 milligrams of test to 300 milligrams of test, you know? Whether it's TRT or a little bit above, I don't really care so much, you know? Um, I care about the blood work and the health parameters, so... If you're healthy on 300 milligrams or 350 or whatever, that could be your cruise, right? Um, now, on the internet, on social media, I've heard people say, oh, I'm cruising right now on 500 milligrams. I'm cruising right now on 600 or whatever, you know. That's pretty anabolic, you know. Um, that's That might not have the best blood work. And the goal of a cruise is to decompress, de-stress, get your lipids hopefully somewhat regulated, get your liver enzymes down. Um, kidneys hopefully good, your creatinine le uh, levels, etc. So yeah, that is uh, blasting cruising, but you guys really need to pay attention to the health pra parameters, right? So whenever you cruise, take advantage of that. Blast your health steps. Of course, blast health steps on cycle, but honestly, there's really not much you can do whenever you're taking, you know, for example, trend, um, EQ, testosterone, high dosages, insulin, um, you're going to probably have bad blood work regardless. But whenever you come down to that cruise or TRT dose, you take the health supplements to expedite the process of getting your health back to normal range, right? As much as possible. Um, so my opinion on it is it's very effective before longevity. You know, there's guys that just blast. And I'm going to be the first one to say I'm guilty of that in the period of when the, when the video we talked about where I had my re-approach to body uh, bodybuilding um, i blasted straight for like two or three years and what i would do is i would just switch compounds i wouldn't come down i'd really just switch compounds so like um you know off season would be for me this is terrible but i'm gonna be honest yeah okay? yeah i don't recommend this like i've always said 750 to 900 test depending on 250 or 300 per mil so i'd run that three one cc uh, three times a week and then i would rotate either deck or eq in the off season or whatever but the test stayed staple I never came off. I never went down to 200 milligrams of TRT. I just was at the point where I was like, I want to make a go for this, blah, blah, blah. In hindsight, I would never do that because I can know now how much I can maintain on a lower dose and actually have really good health, good blood pressure, et cetera. So you never want to blast your round. And there's guys that do that and they just want to turn the other cheek and think that life's an arcade game and it's just not reality. They, nothing will happen to them. But you just said something very important right now. I think the, the reason why people do that is because they think that if they lower their doses to 200 to Shrink. cruise, they're like, oh my God, I'm going to lose all my gains, which is wrong. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, bodybuilders mindset, we're so <laughs> obsessive compulsive, a lot of us, and we like what we see at that that 750 or 1,000 or whatever you're so you doing. you lose it. My God, you know, you get you like the response, and especially with social media now. Like back in the day, it might even be easier to come down because you don't you aren't seen as much, but now you feel like you got to promote yourself. So if you're promoting yourself and you feel mentally flat or not 3D, you don't even want to take pictures of that, but it's just kind of psycho. Like yeah. bodybuilder's mindset is terrible. So that's usually why people want to stay on. And honestly, that's kind of why I stayed on too for that last two years, 
because I was, you know, placing higher at that national North Americans. I was, I was just, I was getting compliments all the time that I was, you know, coming up and I looked impressive and I was at trade shows and trying to market myself. So I didn't want to lose that, even though I know now I wouldn't have. I might have looked a little different, obviously lost a little bit of the three-dimensional look at whatever, but nothing crazy, you know, nothing worth bad health, right? And uh, you just mentioned in the previous question, which mm -hmm. I'm going to reiterate here, you said, you know, as long as your food stays the mm -hmm. way it should, the amount of food you're eating, the training, those yeah. are the two most important factors right there. So it is. would yeah. you say that sometimes if people don't gear as much, they, they feel not in, as enticed as training as hard and eating as much? Absolutely. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. There's guys that are just motivated by their dosages. You see? Um, and the thing is, guys, you need to understand, whenever you lower your anabolic dose to get your health correct, if you do eat, you know, the same amount or more, you need to prepare your mind that you might composition change a little bit. You might actually gain a little body fat now because your anabolic hormone levels are lower. You are going to partition nutrients as favorably, um, but you need to be mentally prepared for that. As long as you know what's going to happen, you'll be okay. Um, but yeah, you can't just, you know, eat and do the same exact thing and look the exact same because that wouldn't make sense to ever take that dose to begin with. Mm. You might change a little bit, but all in all, it's really not that big of a step back. Okay. And you know, if you're smart and you can just put your ego aside, come down and cruise the right way. And you know? think long term. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sure. All right. Thanks, Big Matt. All right, guys. Next question from Instagram is... <clears throat> Super Pump 08. I can pronounce that one. <laughs> Good job. He says, are peptides beneficial for muscle tissue growth without the use of anabolics? All right. So I have used peptides since they started popping up around 2008, 2007. Um, back when just like CJC 1295 with DAC was out, GHRP6, GHRP2, etc. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I, I do believe they will they could aid in muscle tissue growth growth without anabolics. Um, and I would say so because they have shown in studies to increase IGF-1 levels. We know that IGF-1 is an, an, anabolic. We know that it increases uh, insulin sensitivity. It won't be comparable to growth hormone, so let's not get that twisted. And I also firmly believe that the grail in mimetics like GHRP2, GHRP6, in and of themselves, whether they increase IGF to a great extent, the fact that they increase ghrelin, the hor or the hunger hormone, you're going to eat a lot more food. And when you eat a lot more protein and essential fats and carbs, you're going to inevitably or indirectly create muscle tissue. Um, now, maybe the CJC with DAC, with a drug affinity complex or whatever, um, you're going to have a slow GH bleed chronically throughout the day, throughout the week. Once again, elevated GH, I IGF-1. While it might not be comparable to 191 amino acid growth hormone, the real deal, I think you're definitely going to gain more muscle with peptides than without. So definitely think that it's, you know, would definitely do you some service to use them if you are natural. Now, I don't know if you're still natural once you use those, but without anabolics. Um, so yeah, I think those are very effective. But like I said, I've always used them, you know, with anabolics mainly to increase hunger. Mm. because you know that's my uh, limiting factor for me personally and a lot of people is you know you're kind of as big as you can eat per se yeah. um, when you can't shove in the calories and you're in an anabolic environment it's doing a disservice to the anabolic usage too so if you can't shovel in that food I mean imagine I'm jealous of those guys that could just eat eat eat, eat. oh my god if I could just eat endlessly I mean it'd be awesome if you can eat endlessly and remain injury free those two things nutrition and training not drugs that'll facilitate muscle growth like no other so yeah i think the ghrelin mimetics ghrp2 and 6 are effective for muscle growth there you go all right big matt last question all right rj guinevan or guinevan not sure he asks is there anything that can be done about gh induced carpal tunnel symptoms other than lowering the dose so I've experienced this several times and what I've noticed is it happens, first of all, let's get it, you know, out, out on the table. It happens on generic or farm grade. There's a whole nother topic today, but there's a big debate about like, there's no such thing as real generic and farm grade. I've done them both and they're both good as long as they are what they are. So, um, 
I've only really noticed this heavily in the off season when I'm in a caloric surplus. I have a little bit more overall water retention from higher carbs, body weight's higher. I think it um, basically exacerbates the condition, you know, with off season eating, water retention, maybe lack of cardio, plus the GH induced sodium retention from all, all, all aldosterone. I think it increases your sodium hormone and it sucks. I mean, it, it wakes you up at the night. I know for me personally, you know, I have to sleep certain ways and put my arms certain ways and it still just sucks. And I wake up all the time, put my hands in hot water to soothe it for a while. I mean, it's, it's bad. Wow. Recently just actually uh, had this happen as I've increased my body weight since the, the Emerald Cup. And I've literally had to run uh, two IUs and even stop it completely, which this guy, you know, asked without lowering it. Now I think certain things could help. Um, Hawthorne berry for cir cir uh, circulation. Um, high dose vitamin C, diuretic effect. Um, but honestly, you probably, and I hate, he's going to hate hearing this, but you have to kind of tough it out and you might have to toggle the dose downward and then back up, but you might have to go down for a little bit and your body just gets acclimated. You know, once you're deep in your off season, um, there'll be a point where homeostasis to a certain degree will kick in and you'll be able to tolerate it. Now, will it be completely diminished? Maybe not completely. You'll feel it here and there, but it won't be debilitating like it was because it can really be bad. Huh. Uh, so Hawthorne Berry, uh, two grams, 1600 milligrams, two grams, uh, vitamin C, two to three grams. Um, I've noticed that to help a little bit. Um, and then of course, like I said, just playing around with the dose and I know no one wants to come off of it, but maybe go down to just one IU, you know, for a, a little bit. So that is my best advice. And, um, since we're on the subject of, of growth hormone, uh -huh. um, people have like, crazy stories about you know taking up to 16 18 oh, right. yeah. it's nuts yeah. what do you feel based on your experiences the sweet spot or the most amount of growth hormone someone should be using on a daily basis and it's plenty for great results and you don't have all the side effects yeah i mean once again uh i've said this before i think four i use is like a really good combination for fat loss and muscle fullness nice um i've used as high is 10 I use a day really? during 2014 prep okay, wow. for my um, nationals, North Americans, all that stuff. And I really didn't notice, you know, a big difference between four and 10. Um, but once again, in that state that I was in with using multiple hormones, it's hard to differentiate. Yeah. You know, four I used, I used it first in 2012, rip tropins. It was gen uh, generic. It worked amazing. Um, four I use a day, I was just had a more three-dimensional look. My delts were rounder, triceps got rounder. It was a really awesome, you know, phenomenon, for, uh, what have you. And um, I, I can't say that 10 I use did much more. Now, I will say this. I didn't give it a fair shake to try 10 I use in the off-season to compare it to the four I use. But for our spree contest, I didn't really notice much difference from four I use to 10 personally. Um, except, except in the wallet. Oh, the wallet. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, but yeah, you hear stories of people taking 16 I use a day or, you know, a whole, you know, 36 I use a day, two things of serum, two bottles of serum stim a day. That's nuts. Now, maybe it works for them. Um, maybe they don't get the carpal tunnel symptoms. They're already just so, you know, who knows though? Because bodybuilders that abuse like that, this is another topic. If they do that much GH, they might do recreational stuff like, you know, pain meds and other yeah. things to combat that stuff. And it's a huge cocktail of yeah, mess. Yeah, yeah. So you got to think if you're reckless or crazy or extreme enough to use that much GH and who knows how many grams of gear, you might be crazy enough to take, you know, uh, somas at night and Percocets and yeah. this and this and this Uppers to and regulate and everything. Pain killers, yeah, it's everything. a big catastrophe. So yeah. I'm not saying those people do that, but you might, you would think you have to use something to counteract those side effects. Yeah. Um, but I think four I use a day of, real, of good stuff that tests good. And, you know, once again, you always want to test your GH. I always say blood work, GH serum, serum GH serum test, which is acute, which means you can pin it three hours or pin it in, in, intramuscularly at peaks, GH serum levels three hours, get your blood drawn. And then, of course, after continued usage, an IGF-1 level would show um, at the cellular level if it's elevated. Nice. So IGF-1, after using it prolonged period of time, GH serum, serum for an acute measurement. Wow, yeah. nice. Do you have anything in the line that you would suggest to people to use uh, pertaining to this subject? You know, the question we've been having. So anything mm -hmm. to help with, either, what do you have? 
Um, to alleviate carpal tunnel syndrome, or or, or you know growth or anabolic use or 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 SARMs or, or or peptides, you know anything that would tie in well with that. I mean, honestly, I, I would I would say use my heart solve and cardio solve. Okay. Just for circulation, um, arterial health, good blood flow, heart health, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Preventative. Uh, nothing particularly that really augment GH or anything that could be. You know. No, no, but just to combat the side effect or things like that. I would so, say the heart solvent cardio. That solvent. would be the best one. That's overall general health. That, those products, they were really the feedback we get, the uh, emails, as far as lowering blood pressure, improving lipids, it's been amazing. That's important. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. So general health, guys, heart solve, cardio solve, like literally, um, I don't even want to talk about it a lot. I let the people talk for me. Yeah. So. You, um, you still doing videos for the YouTube or no? I am a lot, a lot less. It's hard with the baby, yeah, I'm sure. Hard, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the address, real quick? Give that because a, you have a lot done already. So I'm sure a lot of people watch these videos. Like, oh, I want yeah. to learn more. I've had a lot of people convert and check out the channel. It's oh, just good. Matt Porter approved. On it's, on YouTube. On YouTube. There yeah. you go. Check it out. You guys subscribe, um, because we're doing you know a video every two weeks coming out on Jacalo right. TV. But there's a lot more content that he's accrued all over the years, mm -hmm. and it's all there. So if you guys want to learn more before you ask questions anything like that, just make sure you go watch Max content and True. then. Uh, if you guys want to answer something, you can always ask me on your Instagram. I'll give your Instagram again. Matt Porter approved. Boom, very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, big man. Yeah.